let's say you just got done mounting the motor and you got the diff in the car and you're gonna need a custom drive shaft. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna teach you how to figure out your drive shaft length, what size drive shaft yokes you're gonna need, as well as the drive shaft outside diameter. All these are very, very important and can vary from application to application, but I just got done doing a drive shaft in my BMW E92 drift car, so let's go ahead and break it down so I can teach you how to figure out what size drive shaft you need. I just got this drive shaft back from the company that builds all my drive lines and it came out super good. It's a 1350 yoke up front on the output of the transmission and a 1350 yoke on the input of the Ford 9 inch diff. This is also a three and a half inch aluminum drive shaft. But let's say you don't have a drive shaft yet. You have the engine in the car, you have the transmission in the car, and you have the diff in the car. And you're going, where do I start when it comes down to a drive shaft? Let me get my drive shaft out to show you the steps I would take. You need to know what size yoke that you have. But yoke sizes, if you don't have the yoke yet, be sure to get a yoke size that's gonna be able to handle the amount of horsepower and torque that your vehicle will have, which we'll get into that very, very soon. And then, here's the back of your transmission. Obviously, you have the output shaft, the spline shaft that comes out of your trans, which, if you're gonna get a custom one, you're gonna have to know the spline count and size for all that for the yoke to fit in there. And I would suggest that you match Whatever yoke size is at your diff, match what's on the transmission. So you're gonna need an output transmission yoke, like what you see here, because when the guys that build your drive shaft are gonna need this piece, because they're gonna assemble it like so. What if you guys are wondering, hey, what size yoke do I need? Let's go onto the whiteboard and I'll explain it right now. There's all different types of yoke sizes, guys. There's 13, 10, 13, 30, and 13, 50, and then there's among other sizes that I haven't labeled here. These are typically your standard size that you may find in kind of OEM stuff, but then also I think there's even OEM stuff as far as 1350 as well. This is what I'm using in the BMW E92. Now the reason I'm using a 1350 in the BMW E92 is because of we make 608 horsepower to the wheels and 550 of torque. Also, keep in mind it's a drift car, meaning that this drive line for a drift car is gonna be doing 90 plus miles an hour and then hitting the handbrake and then abruptly stopping and then clutch kicking, bringing the throttle back up to 90 plus wheel speed. These yokes have to be pretty stout. So far, the 1350 is a good rule of thumb that let's just say if you have at least 600 plus horsepower. So I would not recommend a 1330 or a 1310 for anything than 600 horsepower. Me personally, I would even go as far as to say of 500 would be the cutoff. So let's just say if you make any more than 500 horsepower, you're gonna have to go into the 1350 style yoke. Let's just say you make 500 horsepower, 550 horsepower, 600 horsepower, even 1,000 horsepower. Okay, cool. That just tells us you gotta use a 1350 output yoke on the trans and a 1350 input yoke on the differential. So then you hop on whatever website, you buy a 1350 output yoke for your transmission. It ships to your house and you're like, now what do I do? Well, let me show you. I don't have a spare 1350 yoke laying around, so please pretend that the drive shaft is not here. Let's just say you have your yoke. So now we need to establish what length of drive shaft is gonna take us from the transmission to the diff. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna take your 1350 yoke or whatever size yoke that you have, and you're gonna put it into the transmission, and you're gonna shove it all the way into the transmission until it stops. When I do this, you can see it can kind of move in and out. Well, we want it as far in to the transmission as possible, like so. And we're gonna come over here to our back yoke, and typically you'll have like your U-bolts already in the yoke, just take them out like this, so that you have a flat face to bring your measuring tape to. We wanna measure dead center of this yoke right here, or this circle, so split 
this circle in half. I'll explain it on the whiteboard in a second, but I'll just measure it manually right now as best as I can with a camera in my hand. So I'm gonna go like this, right? Sorry guys, I'm doing this with a camera in my hand. You bring the measuring tape over, and then you also measure to the face of the yoke right here. Like say, this would be 44 and a half. Now to make this visually easy to understand, I'll draw it on the whiteboard. All right, so here it is. You have your trans yoke right here with it fully depressed in the trans. You also have your diff that's fixed. You're gonna measure from the center of the yoke all the way over to the face of the yoke on the diff side, which will give you your X dimension. Now keep in mind, this is an IRS. This is not a solid axle. If it was a solid axle, your suspension would be at a four link, and this, when it cycles through its suspension travel, this distance can actually shorten or lengthen. We're only talking about IRS right now. We always know that this yoke is going to be fixed as well as the yoke at the transmission. When I say fixed, it's that these aren't gonna move throughout the suspension cycle. So now we got our yoke sizes, our drive shaft length. Now we need to know what material we want to build our drive shaft out of. There's steel, there's aluminum, there's carbon fiber. It kind of comes down to money and weight savings. Obviously the steel route is going to be the cheapest. Or you could actually go the aluminum route, which is more expensive than steel, takes a lot of weight off the drive line, and it's not as light as carbon fiber, but it's not breaking the bank or you could actually go the carbon fiber route and it's going to be expensive and that's gonna offer the most weight savings. But I think when it comes down to a drift car, I wouldn't really advise using a carbon fiber drive shaft. That's just me personally. So I chose to go with an aluminum drive shaft. I've beat the heck out of this drive shaft even before the adjustments and it's done the job just fine. So we got drive shaft yoke size, drive shaft length, and a couple of materials that you can make your drive shaft out of. But that doesn't mean you can go running to your drive shaft maker guy and say, hey drive shaft maker guy, make me a drive shaft. Because you need to know one more thing. And that one more thing is, you need to know your drive shaft RPM. And why you need to know your drive shaft RPM is because that's what's gonna dictate your drive shaft outside diameter. All right, to figure out your drive shaft RPM, we're gonna have to know your tire outside diameter, your gear ratio at the diff, and the planned vehicle speed you plan to travel at. All these in a certain equation will give you your drive shaft RPM. I don't know the equation by heart because I cheat and I use an online calculator. Spicer Parts right here has a really good calculator that I use. So go ahead and head to their website and you can go ahead and you can make this calculation to know your drive shaft RPM. As you can see here, obviously we have a couple of different drive shaft sizes. These might be accurate, might not, but I wanted to give you a couple of numbers so that you can see. A smaller drive shaft will obviously have a lower drive shaft RPM max rate than say like your four inch. Your two inch can only do say 5,000 RPM. Your three inch can only do 8,000 RPM and your four inch can only do 12,000 RPM. Those would be the max drive shaft RPMs that you can put these drive shafts to before they want to start coming apart. Now don't take my word for it on these numbers. These numbers, I am just guessing. I'm just throwing these out there. I am not specifically for a fact saying two inch can handle this specific RPM, three inch can handle this specific RPM or this. I'm just using these numbers just to give you an idea. Another thing that will dictate dictate the drive shaft outside diameter is the drive shaft length. What's going to happen is if you have a short drive shaft, you can actually get away with using a smaller diameter drive shaft. So let's say you're going to be spinning your drive shaft at 8,000 RPMs, but your drive shaft is only, let's just say, 24 inches long. You could get away with maybe running kind of like in between right here, like maybe a two and a half inch outside diameter drive shaft, or vice versa. Let's say you're gonna be planning on spinning at 12,000 RPM, but your drive shaft is, instead of 44 inches like mine, it's only 20 inches. You could probably get away with a three inch drive shaft. And the opposite applies. If you have a longer drive shaft, you're actually gonna have to go bigger. So let's 
let's say you're going to be spinning it at 8,000 RPMs, but yet your drive shaft is going to be longer, say a 56 inch long, longer drive shaft, you may have to upgrade your drive shaft from a three inch to say an in between, like a three and a half. Don't take any of those numbers like for a fact. Those were just numbers that I'm throwing out there on the whiteboard. They are probably not actual and factual. Consult a professional driveline specialist when it comes down to these kinds of numbers and kinds of things. Don't be afraid to ask me either. I'll gladly point you in a direction or if you're way off or you're close, I can tell you at least that, but I'm by no means a driveline professional. Even when it came down to building this drive shaft for this car, I still consulted the professional who built this drive shaft. But I wanted to take the time and make this video so that it can at least point you guys in the right direction, know yoke sizes, how to get drive shaft length, know the different materials drive shafts are even made out of, and then most importantly, knowing the drive shaft outside diameter and then knowing that the guy that's going to build your drive line he's going to be asking all these questions so this is just a prep to get you prepared so that when you go to that drive line guy he doesn't look at you like this because when it came down to the first time of me ever building a drive shaft or going to a drive shaft shop that's the exact face they gave me just want to help you guys out like subscribe I'll be making more videos. On to the next.